We ready to roll. Make sure it shows up. And it's alive. Okay, we're alive now. Make sure we're alive. Yeah, we're alive. What up? What up? What's up, guys? What's up, Jacob? What's up, DJ? LT James? Callie, what up? Hey, Don? Nail Bat? King Boo, what up? What up, Loba? <clears throat> Apparently, this is supposed to be a mixture of games to be shown. They can be like um, first party and uh, third party, supposedly, from both Sony and Microsoft. I told you that PC gaming show was a waste of time. What's up, Hurricane? You didn't want to listen. Even I could have told you. Don't watch that. Yeah, I hope it's I hope it's good, uh, Jacob. <sighs> um, from what I heard about this event, supposedly it's gonna be like a mixture of first party and third party games from Sony and Microsoft here. So, I don't really have no insane expectations. I just figured I'd stream it for you guys. You know, just fun. We can chill out. Since, uh, you know, you already know. <laughs> nah, I hope not either. the finest what's up Edward Sean what up I'm actually eating while I'm watching this so if you guys hear anything that's actually me <laughs>
<laughs> Shit, where's my food? Uh, what's this thing about? This is a mixture of first party and third party. That's what reports are saying. Uh, he said Batman. Uh, that'd be cool if it was here. Which console I'm going with? Um, honestly, if the prices do, do end up being what we've, um, you know, what was leaked earlier yesterday, because I did a video on it, um, with uh, Target, you know, leaking the the game or the price of um the digital edition, right? I'll more than likely go with uh with the digital edition to be honest. It looks fire. I like the aesthetic. We mean we have Nigerian so I don't know. What's up Salty? Let's turn this up for you guys. I got my headphones on so Therefore, it won't be no echo for you guys. You actually hear it loud and clear. It's going to sell out in record time. World premiere. World premiere. Hey, let's go. Quantum air. I got a Hello question. I come you're not a mod. to the future games show. What a way to start, right? Nolan I North. Am Nolan up? North, and many of you may know me as your ghost from Destiny, or perhaps Dr. Edward Richthofen from the Call of Duty series, or even you know the Penguin from the Arkham series. Oh my gosh. Okay, Nolan, we get it. We get it. You've done. But he didn't want to say Nathan Drake. Oh yeah, I forgot. That's his natural games. voice. Got it. Right. <laughs> of course, most of you know me as Nathan Drake from Uncharted where you probably recognize that voice. <laughs> I'm so happy to be working alongside her again as we host this showcase of upcoming games. Please give it up and welcome the lovely and talented Miss Emily Rose. Hey, Nolan. Hey, Emily Rose. Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome from What's my up, home Dean? to yours. I'm really excited about what we have in store for you today. They just showed Quantum Error, Andrew. Five and Xbox Series X draw near. We're going to be talking to leading game developers to see what we really can expect from the future of games. Plus, we have a host of exclusive game reveals, uh, world premieres, uh, new gameplay demos from current and next-gen consoles. Uh, and some of these are so secret, even I haven't been told about them yet. Wait, they didn't tell you about them? What, they told you? No, like they really didn't tell you about them? I think people are playing oh, for those I don't know because, who I mean, Emily I Rose is. That's, uh, I have a whole list right in front of me right What's there. the name from Uncharted? Send them to me. Uh, let, Elena. Let's get into the good stuff. Okay, so the next title is from Red Thread Games. They're this little indie studio she in studio Norway. She has studio lights on there in her I eyes. Love, I love Norway. You might <laughs> know them from their Choice and Consequence series, Dreamfall Chapters. What up, Pef? So get ready for the world exclusive premiere of their new project world premiere
facts, who wouldn't have? No, it's not all indies, because we just saw a triple A game. That was Quantum Mirror. Hey, my name is Ragnar Tornquist. I'm creative director at Red Thread Games, and we're working on a game called Dustborn. Saw Fusion, Saw Piper. Dustborn is a story driven action adventure about a band of misfits and outcasts on a road trip across America. It's a game about hope, friendship, love, robots, and the power of words. So in this footage, you're watching our main character, Pax, explore a small commune in the Pacific Northwest. She's come here with her crew to recruit her sister. But it turns out her sister's not interested in joining the crew. So your job is to convince her and deal with the consequences of what happens next. The Spawn's coming to PC and next generation consoles in 2021. Thanks again to Ragnar for that exclusive first look at Dustborn. Okay, what's next, Nolan? Next, we've got a hardcore first-person platformer whose recent Steam demo was played over 100,000 times. Here's an exclusive look at a new cyberspace level containing new enemies and abilities from Ghost Runner. Exclusive. Runner. Ghost Runner is coming to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC later this year. All right, we're flipping back in time to the 1930s now with a game that stole the show at the recent Xbox Series X showcase. Here's Tatiana oh, no. Delgado to reveal more about Call of the Sea's spectacular first trailer. Exclusive. Harry, what have you done? Hello, I'm Tatiana Delgado from Out of the Blue Games, working on Call of the Sea. You might have seen our reveal trailer during the recent Xbox Series X event, but we wanted to take the opportunity to walk you through it and tell you a bit more about the game. How strange that your trail ends here. 
Call of the Sea is a first-person adventure puzzle game set in the I can hear a loud and clear, I guess. that takes place in the far reaches of the South Pacific. <clears throat> you take the role of Nora, a woman who has crossed an ocean in search of her husband's missing expedition. At Out of the Blue, we love telling stories and designing puzzles. Okay, that cool. is why we wanted to create a game that had a strong presence of both. And also, we always approach our games with the player's emotions in mind. That being said, although Call of the Sea is a puzzle game, I would say that it is the narrative that drives the game. So, Christopher. Therefore, puzzles serve the narrative and make oh, the story so advance as a reward when solving them. Some of the puzzles we have to do with the expedition itself, using the real world technology of the era. In others, you will try to decipher what the ancient runes were for. And going back to the story, we have the good fortune of having actress Cissy Jones as the voice of Nora. We adore her acting in Firewatch and her ability to create a strong presence with only her voice. It is a tale of self-discovery, an exploration not only of the island, yeah, she does but of the that. characters in I will herself. Give you that. <laughs> Although our game was inspired to an extent by the works of H.P. Lovecraft, this is not a horror game, but an adventure game. We hope to give you a vivid mystery and at the same time an emotional journey. Thank you for your time and we look forward Sub to trouble. revealing more of Call of the Sea in the coming months. Hit that like button, guys. Appreciate you guys being here. Call of the Sea is developed by Out of the Blue and will launch on Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Windows platforms. Our next game features Yay. none other than Sherlock Holmes, but this time he's a youthful, more arrogant version of the famous detective. Here's the producer and community manager from Frogwares to tell us more about the game's setting and how they plan to create a truly open world detective game. You know, Sherlock Holmes can actually work if it's uh, Hi, done like an alien noir My name is and I'm the producer and community manager at Frogwares. We are an 80 people strong Stop independent shit. studio from Kyiv, Ukraine. You may know us for our detective well, games, um, such yeah. as the Sherlock Holmes Adventures, as well as the recent The Sinking City. Oh. We are working on our new game, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. It's a story-driven investigation thriller in which you play as the young 21-year-old Sherlock before he becomes the legend that we all know. For John Watson and Jim Moriarty, Sherlock was a brilliant but rebellious aspiring detective trying to prove himself. The game takes place in the late 19th century on a small Mediterranean island where, according to our story, Sherlock grew up before moving to England and to where he comes back, now as an outsider, to investigate the mysterious death of his mother, the death that scarred his childhood. Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 is an open-world detective game with minimum hand-holding in this game, we are introducing the concept of global investigation gameplay that is heavily based on the feedback that we received from the players on our previous games. We I build mean, it, it on bringing good. in numerous detective features and mechanics that not only synergize with one another, but also allow you to interact with the world around you. Yeah. For example, you can now decide to involve random people on the streets in your investigation, ask them for directions, or question those citizens who you think match your suspect profile. And so if I'm you guessing doubt they this would is a telltale tell like you, version you can, of like, instance, not the right telltale disguise, style, but so you know, at least to like chapters to release uh, chapter by chapter. It's up to you to discover chapter. that synergy and use it at the right time, because as I mentioned, there is minimum hand-holding in the game. Of course, making the right deductions and tracking down criminals is another exciting part of a detective's job. We are aiming to give the player the chance to miss a piece of evidence, pursue their own lead, and eventually let a killer walk free. Those who played our Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments will know what I'm talking about. We are bringing Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 to PC and console sometime in 2021. Thank you so much for your time and enjoy the rest of the show. There are some fantastic games here that we cannot wait to play ourselves. Uh, okay. Chapter 1. Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 is coming to PC, current and next-gen consoles in 2021. In our next part of the show, yeah, the future game show goes retro with a series of games that reimagine the arcade and console classics of some of my favorite eras, the 80s and 90s. And what better way to begin than with a bullet hell shoot 'em up created by a small team from Lebanon, including a former Pixar artist. Here's an exclusive gameplay slice of Signy. Exclusive. Exclusive.
looks like Gal uh, that galaxy in an old game. That's cool. I wouldn't call it a Resogun ripoff. Resogun had its own unique style. It was like a side by side. You can go around a circle. It looks good. Wish list now on Steam. Okay. Signy is coming to Windows, Mac, and the developers hope next generation consoles. Okay, so we're keeping the arcade vibes coming <laughs> with a high speed tribute to arcade racing classics <laughs> like Daytona USA and a stylish platformer that looks like a noir comic book. But first. World premiere. Cuts the flesh. The no, this is a bad. Slay the seven. Save us all. Fulfill what others failed to do. Mornia depends on you. Seven Acolytes. Magrathias bless you, Striver. Exclusive. Hey, we found Solitus game of the year. Right here. Chris Tales is our indie love letter to classic JRPGs. So far, we've shown a small portion of the game's overall content and the ways that you'll be able to learn from the past, act in the present, and rewrite the future, all in real time on one screen. This unique presentation lets you see the impact of your choices instantly, and to get really creative in combat by combining skills and playing with time. Speaking of combat, we just updated our demo on Steam to include Wilhelm, the Child Mage, in a mini Colosseum mode that features a number of new, challenging battles. We're really excited to be bringing Chris Tales both to next-gen consoles and all current consoles later this year. Hey, if you guys are into RPGs, there's something for you. I 
fix computers. My clients pay cash. It's none of your goddamn business what I do with it. Wait, don't tell me you're with them. This actually looks dope. I like this. Evil corporation, this tech enslavement, that. What's next? Chemtrails? Now it's our time to be heard. Join the revolution. Mother. Where the hell did they drop me? And finally, we're delighted to announce the release date for Neon Abyss, a frantic action platformer which fuses classic visuals to an ingenious roguelike dungeon system. Its publisher, Team 17, has encapsulated the spirit of independent games for over 30 years, with titles including Worms, Overcooked, The Escapist, and a whole lot more. Exclusive. Rated T for Teen. Hmm. Oh boy. So that's current gen. Current gen systems. Okay. Neon Abyss will be launching on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Windows on July 14th, 2020. Our next game has been in early access since 2018 with an almost 90% very positive reviews on Steam. Here's an exclusive look at the new Easy Day Academy High School level in skateboarding sim, Skater XL. Skateboarding sim? Exclusive.
Gator XL is it really starts with the controls, the joysticks, the analog sticks on the gamepad are mapped directly to the feet, so you have independent control of each of the foot, and everything is completely physics based and generated uh, in the moment. Nice. So what this leads to is, uh, you know, kind of a, a first for skateboarding games in general is that, you know, the gameplay is not driven by animations, it's driven by the physics. We didn't actually program tricks into the game, we just programmed movement. And with that movement, you're able to do all kinds of tricks. So as you build up your skill, you're also building up your ability to articulate and perform those tricks in different ways. The element of style and execution comes into it. And that's really where the, the satisfaction, the fun of this game comes, that you're really directly in control. You know, just like real skateboarding, there's such a depth in, in the ways that you can use that board and how you can develop your skills. It becomes a very personal thing. And uh, in the real world, that leads to all these other things that, that pop up around skateboarding, you know, the culture and the creative side and um, the community. And, and that's something very unique to skateboarding you don't see with, with other things. So, you know, our goal has really been to capture a lot of those elements and, and bring them into the game as well. The interesting thing is that it's been uh, a decade since the last uh, significant up, entrant wish. into the skateboarding genre, and it hasn't been explored in you know in, in recent times when we have all these different things available to connect the community to, to put content out different platforms. So we're seeing a really interesting explosion of, of content, our creative community, um, and modders, and and all these different things happening um, around the core of the game. So it's really exciting to see where this could lead in the future. Skater XL is coming out onto all major platforms July 28th, and that includes Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Thanks, Dane, and the whole team at Easy Day Studios. Our next game bills itself as Synthwave FPS. Which means it looks nice and you shoot things. It's already been a big hit on Steam, and we're pleased to announce today that it's now coming to Xbox One. This is GTTOD. Get to the orange door. Exclusive. We have arrived. To the Orange Door is coming to Xbox One in 2020, and we're pleased to announce that a new demo is available right now, free to download on Steam. Okay, Nolan. To on Steam on, now on Xbox. What are you talking about? I'm not that bad. No, no. I mean, you're gonna be dying when you play our next game, a third-person action adventure. Get this. It's set within a coma, where you explore your memories while fighting for your life. Okay, I'm confused. I think I need to see the trailer. All right, glad you asked. Exclusive. Yeah, visual style is cool for this, but I don't know how I feel about this. You're in a coma. Okay, you actually do fight. Interesting. Good fly.
Xbox One and Steam, June 18th. Waking is coming to Xbox and Steam on June 18th, 2020. Who wants an exclusive premiere? Well, I'm not really that Star asking Wars here. This Star is Trek? actually happening. Our next game is a sequel to the critically acclaimed World War II flying sim Bomber Crew, which oh, boldly Star goes as close as its licensing team allows into a new era. You get it. World premiere. For too long, the Phasmids have been causing trouble in our peaceful little corner of space. But not any longer. Gina, let's go full Abrams with the flares. Enlist today to embark on an epic space adventure and do your part. Love you, Jay. Let's get some of those cool wipey things in this part, Gina. Join us on Athena Station. Experience the rush of space flight. Seek out new life. Don't and run. make new friends a lot. Ah! And make new friends. And make new friends along the way. Live, laugh, and prosper. And may the force ah! join the space crew. Gina, yeah, let's zoom around in 3D and get some explosions going on here. End it with a bang. <laughs> Best. Space Crew is published by Curve Digital and will Not launch on me. PC, Xbox One, PS4, and Switch in late 2020. Hey, Nolan, I got a good question for you. You ready? What is scarier than clowns? Uh, nothing is scarier than clowns. You know that. Well, you wouldn't say that if you'd been to Wales. You should probably cover your eyes for this. Exclusive. Feels like an Xbox directed event, I swear it does. These are not words I wish to write. I fear you may believe me taken with madness. My father seeks to use me. He wishes me to sing for him as she did. To become the star attraction that will draw good folk to this accursed spit of land. I cannot explain further, but ask that you trust me. Your love, always, Elizabeth. Hello. My name is Ben Tester, and I'm head of marketing at Wells Interactive. Right now we're finishing work on a new title, Made of Scare, and we're really excited to be able to share with you this new and exclusive gameplay footage. What is this on? Like, the graphics are not really great. Made of Scare is a first-person survival horror game, which features a story inspired by Welsh folklore. It fuses psychological, okay. gothic, and British horror. Set in 1898, Made of Scare is inspired by the haunting Welsh tale of Elizabeth Williams. It's a story of a family empire that's driven by torture, slavery, piracy, and a supernatural mystery that suffocates the grounds of the hotel. In this footage, we wanted to explore the 3D sound-based AI system that is the core survival mechanic. We want to show you what you can do to remain undetected, and if you're caught, what tools are available for you to survive. The enemies at Scare Hotel are completely blind, and they hunt by only what they can hear. So any noise that you make from walking or running, bumping into environmental objects, or even breathing heavily will uh, often result in death. So you can avoid detection by creeping, avoiding the obstacles that make the noise, but if the enemies are close, then holding your breath is the only option. If you mistime this and run out of breath, then even your panting will get you killed. You are not completely defenseless. There'll be a sound-based weapon, available with limited ammo, that's hidden in and around the grounds of the hotel. You'll have to find health items, collectibles, puzzle pieces, map pieces, and story pickups. All items that you can find and add to your inventory. I can already the see game will feature three me off. levels of difficulty. The scares remain the same throughout, but a change in AI behavior, enemy strength, limited manual saves, and reduced ammo and health items will put more of an emphasis on that classic survival horror experience. Made of Scare is coming to PC and console, with a digital and physical launch on PS4 and Xbox One this July. You can wishlist the game now on Steam, and pre-purchase will be available in the coming weeks. I'm just weeks. saying. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the show. Hey Nolan, you can <clears throat> open your eyes now.
Okay, there you go. All right, Made of Scare launches on PS4, Xbox, Switch, and Windows in 2020. Hey, M. What's better than looking at one upcoming game? Is this another one of your dad jokes? It's looking at a collection of upcoming games in the space of a few minutes. Okay, I'm listening. Here's an incredible lineup of future hits to get excited about. Yeah, they always make this game, this little uh, disc going here. Keep noticing that game always gets like a sequel or some kind of iteration. Must be fun. find out more information about all those titles by heading to gamesradar.com. Our next game appeared in our sister event, the PC Gaming Show, just a few hours ago, and we're delighted to have John Pearl join us now for an exclusive look at Remnant from the Ashes DLC, subject John Pearl, the design director at Gunfire Games. Right now, the team is hard at work on Subject 2923, the final DLC for Remnant from the Ashes. This DLC is much larger and more expansive than any of the previous content we've released. This DLC will introduce a brand new campaign that takes place a year after the events of the base campaign of Remnant. This campaign focuses on the origin of the Dreamer Project and how it connects to the Roots invasion on Earth. With the footage we're showing, we're giving you all a sneak peek at the icy and unforgiving heights of the new explorable world of Resum. The inhabitants of the world are an entirely new faction of enemies, the Uriki, which are a race of menacing humanoid rats. In combat, you'll find they are as resourceful as they are deadly. This DLC has a lot of additional content. With the addition of the new campaign comes all new quests, bosses, weapons, trinkets, armor sets, and more. Additionally, Recent will be added as an option in Adventure Mode, 
And if you have the Swamps of Courses DLC, it'll add reason to the rotation of survival mode as well. The Subject 2923 DLC is coming to PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4 on August 20th. And we can't wait for everyone to play it. Thank you so much for tuning in to find out what's next for Remnant from the Ashes. Hope you all enjoy the rest of the future game show. Yeah, that's a pass for me, Don. All right, so Remnant from the Ashes, subject 2923, will launch on Xbox One, PS4, and Windows PC. And now Looks for okay. something it's not my, not my alley, though. Exclusive. Everybody loves playing board games. Now they're finally cool. But they're not so easy to play when you can't meet up with your friends or loved ones. <laughs> Don't fret, my old chums. Here at Thunderbox HQ, we've been working tirelessly to create state-of-the-art AI, amazing computer graphics, a bitching synth soundtrack, and our oh, laser that part, but typically harmless board game zapping digitizer. Also, we can bring you the retro sci fi survival strategy <laughs> we like to call The Captain is Dead. Let me just load it up for you. Oh my God. There are aliens all over the ship. Come on, open up. Wow, this looks kind of dangerous. Good! Get stuff in the blazes top of the game, man. Ready! Get your goddamn dirty tentacles off of my spaceship! Biological components operating at 100%. Skill assimilated. Reminds me of one of those old fashioned video games. And I'm done. Taking charge. Uh, I'm going to be streaming later today, so I'm officially out of my phone. Now we're in one particular game. It's going to be a classic. Those aliens they got my stream for the first part, the first couple the of scenes here on dead. YouTube. Head on over right and now then uh, right there's now one particular part of it. Right I'm going to have to stream it strictly to Twitch because YouTube is going to probably take it immediately now. And we'll launch on Steam. And then the rest probably finish on Okay, YouTube. so our next games, they're linked by their focus on player creativity. From designing a food-themed obstacle course for you and your friends, to oh, creating a mobile base that traverses a savage land. But let's start with a title called Main Assembly. Yo, Hello facts. Inventors, and welcome to Main references. Assembly. A game that gives you the freedom to create anything you can imagine. With huge open sandboxes to explore, your creations will be pushed to the breaking point. Jam packed with loads of challenges. Yeah, another and game plays will just be happy your inventions to the limits. Revolutionary magnet, crafting that you can construct anything with ease and precision. Cars, Once oh you've perfected your design, why and not you take can create it for a test blade, Happy with how your robot looks? With the visual programming you interface, dog. you can set up control and use sensors to make tracks. logic for different types of automation you and really bags. put your creations to work. Or Hamstrick jump you? online with friends to compete and collaborate. Show your creations to the world and test out what others in the community have built in the workshop. Will your creation be the one that everyone is talking about? Main Assembly is out now in early access. Oh, it is out already, dog. See you there, yeah. inventors. Bad yolk. What's up, Prep? Hello, my name's Jamie Jackson and I'm from Mythical Games. And today we're super excited to give you an in-depth look at our new games, Blanco's Block Party. We're a new studio created by a bunch of veterans who helped create some of the world's biggest game franchises, including Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Skylanders, DJ Hero, Guitar Hero, and Minecraft Story hey, Mode. DJ Hero Blanco's Block sure. Party is a okay. game about vinyl toys coming to life, but it's actually more than just a game. It's a place for gamers and content creators and collectors to come together 
and to build and to own and to set the rules for the worlds that they want to play in. This game will be so fire here we can game see pass. one of our Blancos running around the junction. The junction in Blancos is a really cool place that is just the beginning of the Blancos world that is going to grow over time. Um, you go there as a solo player, it's going to be full of other players. Innovative jumping. Thing. It's going to be full of gigs and dares that our NPCs are going to set for you. Um, as you do these things in the junction, the you're going to level up your Blancos. So you're going to train them to do different things. So each Blanco that you own not only do you own it, you get to train it. You know, most games allow you to jump once. This game lets you do a double jump. So you can you know make it saying? super fast and jump. Fire. You could make it super tough for some of the shooter games. You could make it super powerful for some of the race games. You're also going to be able to get these really cool rewards from the quests. Um, some of those things might be things that you can attach to your Blanco that just look cool. Some of them will actually enhance a lot of your abilities. But the junction is just the beginning and it's going to grow and get bigger and bigger over time. Now what we're seeing is some of the <laughs> UGC content, so everything here is this, people uh, just built using the <laughs> UGC editor. We wanted it to be super easy for players to build and create these levels. Key to it is everything can be done with a game controller. In Blanco's block party, you're going to be getting new content seasonally. And what that means is we're going to be delivering Passion some projects, really cool stuff that is only available Passion for projects. that season. So if you go and buy a Blanco in season one, that won't be available once you get to season two. So if you manage to snag one of the cool ones, you're gonna be one it's of the few that gets home. to keep that for as long as you wanna keep it. The same applies to any of the dares and the quests. Those are gonna be locked to a season and anything that you get from completing those things only is available in that season. Ownership is a key part of the experience. So our proprietary technology platform provides true ownership of what we're buying and creating Oreos for God's verifiable I assets. Not like this game. It allows us to legitimize the type of gray markets that pop up around so many games, and it gives players the power to dictate the value of those assets. And the key thing is, is you as a player own it, and we're going to make it really easy for you to do what you want with that. Players can create the world that they want in Blancos. We've just provided really easy tools so that you can build whatever world you want to build and set the rules for that world. The limit really is kind of your imagination. Blanco's Block Party is coming to PC later this year and we will be announcing more news around additional platforms and our beta soon. If you want to know more about it, head over, reserve your account at blancos.com and you can also follow us on Twitter at PlayBlancos and Instagram at PlayBlancos. Thank you and enjoy the show. <laughs> Death by Fuse Exclusive. Okay. What is this? Hi, my name is Lucas. I'm a producer here at Donkey Crew working on Last Oasis, and today I would like to show you our new map. Last Oasis is a nomadic survival MMO, combining innovative features that allow players to traverse the world on complex wooden machines, engage in epic battles both against the fauna and against each other, leave a mark on the player-driven economy, and do many more exciting things in this unique world. What we're showing here today is the next big addition to the game, a volcanic oasis. This upcoming type of a map consists of all new areas to explore, from cold and barren fields stretching all the way to the horizon to hardened volcanic rock formations that create natural passages and scorching hot lava lakes obliterating anything that gets near. As you travel through these vast virgin terrains, you get a chance to discover efficient ways to mine obsidian and find rare loot in mysterious man-made stone runes. Yo, runes. don't that look like a little spider mobile from uh, Wild Wild West with Will Smith? Y'all talking about with Loveless? 
Don't Harsh light the little spider thing. Volcanic lands make it very difficult. Don't it, look, at, look, at the, look at the look at the legs, they guys. They decide to set on this hot soil. Everybody the spider and sources thing. of water are hard to come by, and hostile <laughs> fly monsters don't make it any easier to explore because they're attracted to water winds, making it essential for anyone who decides to venture towards these new territories to prepare in advance. Thanks Smart loveless. traders will likely take advantage of the resource scarcity to try to make some flots on desperate nomads missing some wood or water. While explorers uh, will be risking make their lives like they used to. to gather rare resources that appear Wait, in high fire. quantities in these dangerous conditions. We are working tirelessly to bring in more content and improvements for the game. So make sure to try last Mr. Out Wales. now on Steam. See you next time. How nice of you to join the festivities and add color to our arrangements. Next up, the Future Games Show talks to industry experts about how next the lovely gen consoles and PC me that you are watching trash. are changing the way we play. We hope you enjoy our special investigation into the future of gaming. And for the record, we called it that first. to see what's next. Ah. <sighs> the future. A new generation of gaming is upon us, with home consoles such as Sony's PlayStation 5 and Microsoft Fire. Xbox Series X set to release in late 2020. Developers are preparing to change the way we play forever. We see companies like Google Stadia continuing to push the boundaries of cloud gaming technology, while studios like Epic Games are beginning to show us what a new generation of engines will be capable of delivering. The Future Game Show has caught up with some of the world's leading developers in fields including graphics, audio, storytelling and machine learning to discover how the next generation of hardware or push video games in a way that we have never experienced before. The way that I see game worlds changing in the next generation is with a bigger focus on player interaction and making the worlds feel truly alive. We can already make game worlds that are almost too big for the amount of content that we put in them. So, of course, graphics will take a huge leap forward, but it's the complexity, diversity, and the freedom to play around in them that I think will be the biggest leap. The new technology that really excites me is using machine learning, both to make the game feel a lot more responsive and meaningful to the player, and to augment my abilities as a game developer. The way that I see video games evolving in the next generation is with richer game interactivity. We've seen graphics fidelity just explode over the last 20 years. Games can look so good these days, it's crazy. But the sorts of things you can do in video games have not really caught up. What I'm super interested in is solving problems that help game worlds and the characters in them play and feel as alive as they can now look. The next generation of tools and technology should allow a game to really acknowledge the emergent, creative things you can do as a player and to help game developers create richer, more soulful game worlds. I'm really excited about using technologies like Semantic ML to help game characters feel more responsive and alive, to get the game to create content not just randomly, but based on the kinds of things you've done as a player so far. One way that game Did worlds might feel more alive in the future is by replacing scripted interactions with Did organic conversations. This live demo from Russian AI project LiveMind literally puts words into Geralt's mouth and could be a sign of things to come. Do you remember Beglewood Derby? Yes, I won a great saddle for racing then. Of course, it isn't just game worlds that will evolve in the next generation, but the types of stories being I'll told within them too. Narrative is such an important component to the games we play, furthering our connection with virtual spaces and the characters that inhabit them. It makes sense then that this is one area developers are eager to evolve. I wrote my first game for a computer with 1K on cassette. Obviously, 40 years later, so much has changed, but in some ways, we're still pursuing the same goal. The biggest benefit of games as a storytelling medium is the interaction, but often we still tell the That's stories at like the that. players instead of truly letting them be a part of it. Future of interactive storytelling you don't play some should be games about how we can make the as frictionless as possible. Really making the player feel like they are actually part of the story. Um, 
you know, tailored experiences that they can do not only by themselves, but also with friends at home or online. I'm also hoping to see storytelling explore more collaborative efforts, telling stories to larger groups of players at once without telling each of them that only they are the chosen one. When we start thinking to ourselves, is traversal what should be at the heart of every storytelling experience in AAA? You know, can we make it more about the internal conflicts rather than those external conflicts of running, jumping, and shooting? Movies never have to cut away to load the next scene or more assets. If there's oh, okay. a cut to black, it's only because the director wanted that cut in that exact so moment. So somebody tried it. Okay. And storytelling goes well beyond just the words being said. It's the audio and the camera shot and effects and the location. Now with characters and the world looking more real too. than ever, less downtime due to loading and more feedback from our controllers, we'll hopefully see larger or more immersive scenes that won't need to let up just because the hardware requires it. Awesome. A new generation of hardware means we are about to encounter a new frontier for graphical fidelity and visual effects. That's a given. But what about game audio? Sony and Microsoft are putting audio, more emphasis baby. than ever before on audio. And in the way that sound can draw us in game worlds like never before, could our sense of immersion in virtual spaces be about to change entirely? The next generation, audio will definitely be recorded and expressed in a much bigger sense. Uh, we're already starting to see hints of it already. Uh, technologies such as ambisonics and ambisonics are being rediscovered and people are starting to think in different ways of how we could even push the boundaries even further. So one of the things that's so exciting about the next-gen audio is that it's promising just a whole new level of immersion. Obviously the PS5 3D audio is kind of the most outspoken example of this. And so with that new immersion, hopefully is gonna come whole new levels of player engagement. This is something that, that's very special about sound and music is that it's, it really gets to, you know, it, it accesses the core of who we are. And the fact that we have 3D audio will enhance that in a much grander sense. Yeah, Black Black was fire. Of Felt course, some of the biggest I changes think, yeah. to play you won't be able to see. From smaller teams being given the tools to more easily achieve their creative ambitions, the expansion of services such as cross-platform play and cloud gaming, to a huge reduction in load times and install sizes. Here's we, just some of the reasons developers this. are excited about the changes on the near horizon. You know, you know what they missed the ball on though? Unity. Never, Unity could have been all the fucking online amazing down to get they a fucked refresh. it up. I definitely feel Especially like the next multiple. generation will have more opportunities to play together when we can't be together. I think the future of mobile gaming is really about two things. The first is about ubiquity. The second part of mo mobile gaming in the future I mean, they're literally just repeating themselves. We heard this shit already. Play games in a more Not to mention, I, I rehearsed it because, you know, we talked about this beforehand. Find someone <laughs> to play a game purely solo Nothing new. Any game with other people. Crossplay is becoming more widely accepted and implemented, and that means you shouldn't have to coordinate what SKU you're getting with your friends, what version they're getting, what platform they're on. You should be able to seamlessly play together, which is amazing. Uh, almost zero load time. Yeah, the um, platform ownership. What was I about to say about Unity? Story was okay. Saves. Story was okay. Focus on multiplayer was trash experience rather than the PC I did I love the parkour the system though it felt more you know smaller teams personalized to more, of you know I like that fidelity is the developers will have this extraordinary opportunity to create really rich diverse worlds at very very high resolution and we'll be able to come to rely on game engines to do so much of what we couldn't do before well, that's dope. in terms of complex lip syncing facial expression complex animation what this will do is it will level the play playing field for developers um, and developers who previously couldn't have competed at the high end will be able to do so. It's a really exciting time. Yay! We'd like to thank everyone who gave up their time to bring us that insight into the future of gaming. All right, our next game is introduced by a gaming legend. Thanks, Emily. You know, guys, I... No, seriously, no? Oh, my God. Okay, no, I refer, of course to Brian Fargo. He's the original producer of Fallout. He's here to tell you about the action RPG Wastelands 3. Let's take a look. Anybody played the first one or the first two? Exclusive. What is that game about? I, I remember him talking about that a long time ago. Wasteland. Hello everybody. I'm Brian Fargo. I was the executive producer on the original Fallout and Wasteland series. And I'm here to tell you today that finally, Wasteland 3 is coming, August 28th. 
for the Xbox, PC, and PlayStation 4. Who would do this? Not even next gen consoles. Who would murder families and children? Oh, never mind. I don't even want to know about the game now. Let's find this. the monsters who did this. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> nah, just A by style, man. I don't like them crazy over. How'd I put it? I don't like strategy looking games where like the camera is like fixed in one position. And it's like above. I don't like those for some reason. I don't know. There's not, there's not my style. Three is coming to Xbox One, PS4, Windows, Mac, and Linux on August 28th, 2020. Question. If clowns are a 10 on the scarometer, And what? My dying is like a four? Yeah, we've been over this. Look, if clowns are like high, then our next mm, game I needs a new so. scoring system. Kelly. Check out this new gameplay from survival horror remothered broken porcelain. See you later, Don. Exclusive. Hey, no, I'm pretty sure you're going to be mature. back because when well, I'm out the stream, it's going to shock you. come in, Miss Reed. Come in. Good evening, Mr. Ashman. Okay. Do you remember me? Getting gun to a gun friends. I'm Jennifer, by the way. Yo, dude look like um the dude from Hannibal. Lindsay? Yeah, I'm talking about the dude that had like that that cut his face up that was in the bed. He kinda looked like the dude from Hannibal. At last. It's just a bad dream. Mr. Ashman. Of course I will. Remothered. Oh shit. August 25th, five days before my birthday. Yeah, I might try that out. Why not? That was interesting. Remothered Broken Porcelain comes to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Windows in late 2020. Next up, we have a world exclusive teaser for a new title from Different Tales. No spoilers here, but if there's a full moon tonight, we all should stay inside. World premiere. the apocalypse that's it oh full game reveal oh, in man, july so that's going to be at microsoft the event. so the future game show has taken a closer look at the games of tomorrow but big changes are happening to the way we play right now features such as cross progression and cross play cross allow us to play 
It sounds like you that time you tried to play Crash Bandicoot. As I was saying, new features like <laughs> crossplay let PS4 owners connect with Xbox, Switch, and PC owners in their favorite shooters. We caught up with developers High Res about how these features work in their current and upcoming games. Yeah, they just spoiled a big surprise. What was the point of showing this? Cosplay lets you play games with your Xbox friends, show. regardless of which platform they own. And it's grown in popularity thanks to titles such as Fortnite and Call Fortnite. of Duty Warzone. Developers High Res Studios are trailblazers in this field, Do but the like industry as a whole show. has been slower to embrace the potential of crossplay. We caught up with High Res to ask why. And to discover the importance of crossplay okay. as we head into the next generation. To overcome the challenges of making crossplay work, you need to change people's mindsets. There's a fear that platforms will lose revenues and lose players to competing platforms if they open the doors to crossplay and progression. In the future, I think you'll start to see consoles and other platforms embrace a truly play anywhere experience. It will become increasingly less important what hardware you're using to access the game and much more about like connectivity and communication. They'll still be exclusives, but the true crossover hits won't be constrained to one platform. Crossplay and cross progression also challenges game developers to think more globally and holistically about audiences. Is that you should be able to play from anywhere, doing anything, and kind of have that uh, that that follow you around as you go from console to console or platform to platform. If they choose Xbox or PlayStation or Nintendo or PC for the next generation, it doesn't matter. The game they love and the purchases they made will come with them. Players expect the same experience across all of their platforms, and so to be able to actually pull that off takes a reasonably high Larry level Jacob. of sophistication. Um, and you also want to ensure that kind of competition across all these platforms is fair regardless of who they're up against. Uh, now that a show? console game is a, is a PC off, like, game, is a mobile game, first party for many games, games things like first party. cultural well, relativism, first localization, party. global community management are a bigger and so bigger role in gaming. Um, so I think the long answer is short that's one of the kind of maybe hidden benefits of crossplay is it stimulates diversity and kind of a global approach to how you think about gaming. To deliver next gen crossplay and progression like this, it takes commitment from the start. High Res Studios currently publishes three crossplay and cross progression titles, with a fourth coming this summer. We keep learning new lessons, but the single biggest is it's much easier to build a play anywhere title from the start than it is to shoehorn it later in a project. More players accessing the same game rather than fragmenting across all of these platforms also means that your ability to make matches and the quality of those matches starts to increase. Overall, we're looking to drive the most fair and fun game experience we possibly can, and we think that crossplay and cross progression are some of the most important pillars to get there. You guys ready? It's time to get paid. Don't worry, Demo was born ready. What's up, everybody? I'm Scott Lucier, AKA Scott Gandhi, and I'm the lead designer at First Watch Games. Currently, we're finishing work on Rogue Company, and we're really excited to be able to share this update with you today. Rogue Company is a third-person shooter that features a unique blend between action-paced gameplay and objective-based game modes. In Rogue Company, you play as a rogue, which are a group of elite mercenaries that operate outside of the wall, and they drop in exotic locations all over the world. Rogue Company is going to be free to play, and it'll feature cross-play and cross-progression across all platforms. Um, Since day one, one of our cornerstones was like making sure that you're able to play the game you want the on the platform you want with the friends that you want. At the end of the day, Rogue Company can be summarized in one word. Inclusive. I might actually try this game out. Hey, Salt, you going to count this? I might try this year. We're testing cross-play and cross-progression features, polishing weapons, rogues, and maps. The majority my of my time is spent refining the core combat experience in Rogue Company while also making sure that our maps and modes are providing exciting up, games. I do want to say, it's pretty amazing to play Rogue Company on a handheld device like the Switch. Being able to play Rogue Company at 60 FPS as I sit on the couch and my wife is watching another episode of Love Island is a dream come true. Rogue Company is coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch later this summer. We can't wait for you to play our labor of love. To sign up for the alpha, head on over to RogueCompany.com. Thank you, and enjoy the show.
Big thanks to the teams at High Res for that look into the future of crossplay and info about their upcoming titles. Now we all know the next generation consoles are getting closer. So here's an exclusive look at what's to come in Square Enix's third person shooter, Outriders. Exclusive. Next time on the Outriders broadcast, we'll be taking a look at the journey into the unknown, plus the characters joining your adventure as you battle through a hostile world. We'll also be showcasing a brand new area and delving deeper into our next class, the Pyromancer. Coming next month. Outriders. We can't wait to hear more about Outriders in the lead up to release sometime in holiday 2020. We're heading 150 years into the future next, where humanity is struggling to survive and human brains are being transferred into robot bodies. Here's more on disintegration. Not one step further. See what we've got. Five integrated outlaws. Sir, have you got weapons and shelter in there? Maybe you could give us a chance to rest. We may have more of interest to you than guns. Hi there, my name's Marcus Leto. I'm the president and creative director at V1 Interactive, and we are currently working on our brand new debut game called Disintegration. And we are super excited to finally uh, be uh, getting ready for it to launch soon. Wow, look at you. Yeah, I guess you took the hard road. With Disintegration, we set out to build something truly unique. Um, it blends some great parts of a first-person shooter with a real-time tactical elements in a way that's never been done before and in a way that required us to invent all new gameplay mechanics in order for it to work. The story of disintegration is uh, something that's set about 150 years from now in the future where humanity is really struggling to survive and one means of survival is taking the human brain and actually implanting it within an armored shell and attaching that to a robotic armature, allowing them to survive through this period of time. Once in these robotic armatures, humans now find themselves in a world where they are super strong, they're super durable, and some of them don't want to return back to humanity again. And so a new army is developed called the Rayon. In this world, we play some of those early integrated who are fighting back and who don't want to follow along with the rayon. I've seen what you call freedom. Not interested. In Disintegration's multiplayer, we allow the players to team up five v five like against one Halo. another, each with their own crew in this what incredible battle against one another. Each one of those uh, those matches takes place in a different type of game mode, so there's a great variety of things to hop into. Victory. Victory. In order for the player to really have success playing Disintegration, they need to consider both parts of the equation. On one hand is your grab cycle and your weapons and abilities that you use fluidly in combat. That's just one part of the equation, though. On the other hand is your ground squad, each with their unique abilities that you can fire off tactically in gameplay. It's important that the player understands that both of these things work in tandem together and that they are part of a whole. They are the crew. And for you to kind of consider both parts is critical for your success. So Disintegration is finally going to be released on June 16th on uh, PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and Steam well, for the PC. We're excited to be on all three platforms simultaneously, and we are eagerly waiting for the community to hop in and start playing with us. Um, I'm sorry. Were you two having a moment? I can leave y'all be. What? The grav cycle? I'm a pilot. Uh-huh. It's called a pre-flight inspection. No judgments here, huh? Disintegration is coming to PS4, Xbox One, and PC June 16th. 
Now prepare yourselves for a lesson in alternative history, as we explore what might have happened if the Second World War didn't end in 1945. Exclusive. Hi everyone, my name is Bogdan Graczyk, the game director of the upcoming narrative-driven adventure game Paradise Lost. I'm super excited to walk you through the alternative history <laughs> that serves as the setting for our story. In Paradise Lost, the Second World War doesn't end. and Soviet troops are closing in. Without warning, the Nazis unleash the full might of their nuclear arsenal on their homeland and Eastern Europe, stopping the Soviet offensive in its tracks and turning Europe into an uninhabitable nuclear wasteland. To the rest of the world, this seems like a final act of desperation by one of the cruelest regimes in human history. Yet few know of the secrets that have been hidden deep underground. The Ark Project is among the most secretive endeavors of the Third Reich. Its goal has been to construct a network of hidden, self-sustainable, heavily fortified underground bunkers meant to shelter an Aryan master race society until it can emerge and rule the post-nuclear landscape. But not everything goes according to plan. For reasons unknown, one of the bunkers, located just outside Kraków, Poland, goes dark. Now, as you discover the past, you can shape the present. It's been 20 years since the explosion that set our story in motion. You play as Szymon, a 12-year-old Polish boy driven by personal tragedy to seek out the bunker on the edge of Kraków. The last story on Earth. Paradise Lost is coming to PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X. Our next game... Wait a second. Emily, have you crossed another thing off my script? Hey, we discussed this. You can't be trusted. Unbelievable. Okay, fine. <laughs> Just roll the tape. World premiere. Whether you choose agent, or choose hacker, it takes two to complete the mission. It takes two to stay alive. Operation Tango. It takes two to save the world. Our next game is so secret, we don't even know its name at the time of this recording. So I'm just going to put myself out there and make one up. I'm guessing it's called The Kingdom of the Gusty Willows. What kind of fake name is that? It is not called... The Kingdom of Gusty Willows. Here's the developers of the Kingdom of the Gusty Willows to talk about their show-stopping new PS5 project, The Kingdom of the Gusty Willows. Can I make it extremely clear? This is not called The Kingdom of the Gusty Willows. What's the big deal? It's a good title. <laughs> Exclusive. Sorry, Nolan, the name isn't 
Kingdom of the Gusty Willows. It's actually called Cana Bridge of Spirits. Hi, I'm Mike Greer. I'm the Chief Creative Officer at Ember Lab. And I'm Josh Greer, uh, Mike's brother. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at the studio. You may have seen our game, Cana Bridge of Spirits, at the Sony PlayStation 5 event. And today, we're really excited to share a little bit more about the project with you. So, what's this game all about? Well, Cana Bridge of Spirits is a story-driven action adventure game that combines fast-paced combat with exploration and a really fun, charming companion mechanic where players are going around collecting forest creatures that we call the Rot. So you play as Kana. She's a spirit guide who has traveled to this forgotten village and soon discovers that there are many trapped, lingering spirits. Um, and it becomes clear that there are larger forces at play that have sort of corrupted the environment and stopped things from moving on. Well, the main focus of the game actually revolves around helping these trapped spirits. So each kind of level or world that you enter is all focused and kind of themed around the corrupt spirit that's lingering. And to really help these spirits, you ultimately have to get to know what happened to them in their past life. And to do so, you're looking for clues in the environment, you know, facing combat challenges, solving puzzles, but ultimately it all relies on building and growing your team. Yeah, the rut are, are key to like sort of every aspect of gameplay. They can be used in combat, to augment abilities, they can be used to manipulate the environment to carry things around for you. The more rot you have, the stronger you're going to be as a player, and the more ability, abilities you get to unlock. The trailer does a lot of things, but one thing we wanted to do was make sure we established the tone and sort of darker elements that are in the game. And uh, you know, people see the rot and the cute characters, and they immediately fall in love with them, which is great. But the opening cinematic with the meditation and kind of kind of battling these spirits, we wanted to to use to kind of set oh, the darker in tone and and establish these, you know, the player is going to be, you know, ex exposed to some darker themes in the storytelling. We're targeting a holiday 2020 release, and it will be coming to PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and the Epic Game Store. We're really excited for everyone to get their hands on the game, and in the meantime, enjoy the rest of the show. Well, Yay. I think that's it. Thanks so much for watching the Future Games Show and look out for more great next-gen coverage on gamesradar.com throughout this week and beyond. And don't forget to check out our sister shows from the Gorilla Collective over the next few days right here on Twitch. Wait, wait, come on, come on, Nolan. It wouldn't be a game show without that, you know, we got one more thing. Can we do that one more thing moment? You are so right. Wait, are we in this one? No. Oh, well. But hey, Em, would you work with me again? Maybe in some kind of swashbuckling adventure where I play a roguish, charming adventurer? Nah, I think I, you know, I've been there, I've done that. Aha, uh -huh, I like the tease. Well, it's for me. Three years ago, Serial Cleaner took you back to 1970s America in a single-player stealth action crime story where you played as a professional crime scene cleaner, getting rid of bodies and the incriminating evidence all while avoiding the police. Now, with over one million owners and releases on all major platforms, we're going to the 90s. Emily Rose, dog. Serial <laughs> cleaners. <laughs> uh, see this well, game. that really does complete oh. our showcase for 2020. Yeah, we hope you've had a great time watching and that you've seen something that you can look forward to. We also just want to take a moment to thank our partners for helping put all of this together. But most of all, we want to thank you for watching. I'm Nolan North. And I'm Emily Rose. And this has been, Emily, if you will, The Future Game, Game Show, Show 2020. 2020.
Future Gaming Show. World premiere. Thanks for watching. All right, your boy's getting set up. We're gonna do some. Uh, we're gonna do a classic. I'm gonna be shocked when I'm out when I fire it up. So, anyway, I'm doing that right now. So I will see you guys in five minutes for this stream on the channel. And uh, yeah, that'll be good. Hope you. Hopefully, you enjoyed this little stream. I figure why not stream a shout to Marlon. He he recommended me do it. So we did it. We got through it. Um. Like three games were shown that actually stood out for me. What's up, uh, Hyrule? So, what game I'm streaming? You'll see in five minutes, or should I say four minutes? Because literally all I have to do is make the thumbnail. Give me like five. Give me like four minutes. <laughs> anyway, hit that like button. See you guys on that stream. Shout out to you guys. We don't shut it down. Ignore my message.